Hey guys, what is going on? We've got our first professional game on Dust 2 the other day at IEM Sydney. So I'm going to break it down, look at some of the strategies the teams used, look at some highlight rounds as well, because it's just interesting to see how the teams are going to play this out and start to get an idea of how this is going to impact the professional scene. To start off with, you can see both Flusher and JW want to get aggressive up here towards short, get some information. We'll talk about that more in a second about the importance of CT control, but you can see as the players push up, they really just bully the CT control or this short control, sorry, away from the CT players. There's not much they can do. Golden's trapped on the site. JW's going to try and help him out, but really they're just going to swarm onto Golden and he's going to stay alive for a little bit. There's not really much he can do. And G2 looking really good at this moment. 4v3 man advantage with the site gone and a whole lot of short control. You can see Body's got it locked down. The players are going to try and rotate in. The bomb also planted for shorts. So things looking really bleak for them, especially when this starts happening. All the players start to take out everyone and JW stuck behind a smoke. He's going to down in a second, but Lekro pulls off quite a phenomenal play. And he comes out here towards long and there is an importance behind long control. And I want you to notice the fact that Lekker is just nuts. Uh, that's all you got to work out right now. And the fact that they do the right thing here. Kenny S and Apex double peeking, along with MBK trying to get his peek in. Lekker just sends them all home. He just says, that's enough, fellas. I've got this one. Even got a kit. I'll defuse this really quickly. And that's a great play by him. And just some incredible shots for our first ever round on Dust 2. We have to wait no further than the first gun round to see some great CT performance and great CT movement from Fnatic. We know the Fnatic managers are very active working on nice new ideas. To start off with, this isn't really a new idea. This is just standard map control for Dust2. Same as the old version pretty much, but it's good to see how it's being locked down and how teams have been practicing. So Golden running anti-flash until he can Molotov in and really just lock down this bedroom where you can see NBK is forced away. And that's until Flusher throws this pop flash for Golden to take full control, even deep into bedroom. You see that where that flash pops, it's going to get anyone, maybe trying to hold that with an AWP. And he just smokes this off. And notice as soon as they have this deep bedroom control, this is very important from the CTs. They rotate straight back over here and smoke off short. And this is simply because in this kind of scenario, it's very common for the CT side to take long control or short control. They need one or the other. Notice on the pistol round, they took short control. It didn't work out so well for them. So they go for a bit of long control this time. And if they get a whole pile of utility out towards long and MBK hears this, the immediate reaction can potentially be, let's get short really quickly, force the CTs, lock them into long, and just try and play this round from short. Not the case, so Flusher comes back and smokes this off after he throws his pop flash for Golden. And they have some really good map control right now. Short smoked off, they've given up the earlier short control, but besides that, they've got good mid control. We're going to see some great rotations again from the CT side. So Golden's still just locking this down. Going to have a bit of presence towards middle here. And notice JW is going to tuck himself in, and Crims does a really good job of rotating in and out in this round. Notice he goes back towards B as a bit of pressure is applied there. But JW is going to be the first one seeing some pressure. So as this smoke and flash come in, Crims is right, I'm going to get over here. Me and JW are fighting. JW takes out the first player, Crims swings out, and that's just an incredible hold from the two players. JW and Crims having some great movement. And you see, it's very basic. Crims is this great rotator position between uh, the B and the middle area. And basically, him and JW single-handedly lock down this potential mid-take. Because again, that's another alternative. With long gone, you can try some kind of mid-to-B split. Crims and JW run right on top of it. They rotate straight away after getting this long control. Get themselves into a great position around this area to rotate either way. Obviously, if Golden goes down, they have a great early warning system that the long take's coming in. So they've got a little bit longer to rotate over. They're quite close to short to throw some can utility if the short take does come in, if they start seeing some pressure from Flusher. But besides that, they're both in great positions to rotate either way, depending on where the take comes in. This is a very important factor is normally most teams on the CT side at least have this one rotator who kind of moves all the way across the map. In this scenario, it's kind of like JW and Crims bumping each other off, and we'll see this even more in further rounds. Round six wasn't overly exciting, but there was a little uh, trick coming in. Something again from the old version of Dust2 is just AW holding down this long position or this short position. I kept getting that wrong with his AWP, but notice Flusher gets in here and this is a cheeky little boost you can do to try and catch anyone coming out unders. There's Apex, misses the shot, but still a good amount of information and definitely a potential kill there if you do make your shot. Midway through the half, we start seeing some adaptions made by G2. They're becoming a wise this long control and they have a solution of their own, which is Apex. <laughs> getting his opening frags, obviously quite good at this. You can notice... As this first frag comes in, Mixwell gets caught off guard. They try and flash over. JW says no, and that's the end of that. However, there's a great reaction here from G2. Notice there's no one on short right now. It wasn't the same as the other round with Flusher. Of course, Fnatic don't want to be doing the same thing over and over again, but JW does start to move back here. But the reaction from G2 is we need to pick on this short position to really pincer in this long guy, and Gon's going to find himself in a world of hurt. So here comes the flash. Beautiful shot by Apex. That's a great shot right there. And as he continues, notice he's flashing off long. He doesn't want this player rotating in, getting information. Also, the flash comes in to keep Flusher at bay to make sure he doesn't rotate in too quickly. And his timing is off, really, to stop that flash coming in. Apex holding it down, while Kenny spots Golden in pit. And right now, 
Golden screwed pretty much. There's no, there's no other way to say this. They have no long control. Golden's lost his short player. They've done a great job of stopping Flusher rotating in. The timing was really good. Very explosive from Apex to really punish this the player JW playing on site by himself. And as this goes on, notice Kenny knows he's going to keep peeking down to that pit area while NBK creeps up here and he's just like a shark closing in on his prey. And once Golden goes down, that's the end of the round pretty much. And so it's just a great adaption by G2. Take this short control, then pincer onto the guy at long. And that's a great way you can adapt with people taking long control over and over again. Get up short and then crunch onto their long hold from two directions. Apex does a great job of holding on his utility until the bomb starts to go down, smoking it off. And as soon as this comes in, notice Lecker and Crims have had enough of that. They're off and they're saving their weapons for the next round. And that next round doesn't do too much better for Fnatic. You can see G2 have played a more passive round to start off with. No fast rushes out long or out into short areas, minute 20 left. And they're going to start taking short right now. And they're going to do a great job of, again, punishing this control from Fnatic, where they're very split up. They're playing kind of 1-1-1. One, one, one. You can see JW's back in middle, flushes up here in short, and they've left Golden out at long after this control's come in for them. So they're going to flash a flusher, and now short is theirs. Very simple, very effective flash, and flusher does a nice molly to reposition. But besides this, G2 are like, okay, we have short. Are Fnatic going to re-aggress there? We haven't seen them re-aggress so far into the round. So we're going to go back and now take long. Because they have very, very little map control over here at A. And you're going to see this works out almost perfectly for them. As Mixor walks out here, we'll just give it a little bit of a fast forward. This is going to dry walk out here. No indication they're coming. This is going to kill Golden. And then at this exact moment, you see Apex is going to find himself up onto the A site. They're going to really pinch the Flusher. Flusher has to choose to push one of these angles because all well, the players are coming from long. Great discipline from Mixor not to peek uh, too early. Apex, not so much discipline. You can see he has to jump down here, even though it's a 5v3. Gets team flash, but they're going to throw him another one. He's going to get in here. That's the end of JW, and Crimson Lecker have absolutely no option again but to save. But honestly, a very standard round on Dust 2, taking away that short control, then the long control, and really just suffocating Flusher on the A site. You remember that boost earlier? This is a very simple way just to get rid of that boost. Just throw a pop flash your player comes out unders. It's going to get anyone trying to boost up, and Apex can easily walk out unders. And this is what we're going to see adaption for what I was talking about before. They've made a great job, Fnatic, of reading the situation that we're just getting abused at one of these two choke points. So both JW and Golden are going to hang around towards long and really try and lock this down while Flusher has short. So there's no chance of them getting squashed onto or someone getting suffocated on the side as we saw before. Flusher does have to move because this mid pick comes in and Crims goes down. But after he re-smokes it, notice as we continue through, they get a bit of uh, pressure up here towards short. He is rotating back out here, reading the situation that G2 might just keep doing what's working. And he's going to rejoin JW here, just to lock down short. And he's going to play this very common car position. Or he's actually going to move back out here towards long. But the great thing about this setup is you've got one player watching short, one player watching long. And then this player can kind of play this car position. Often you put an AWPA here. JW would maybe be more effective in this position, swapping the two. But sometimes the timing just doesn't work out. And this guy just kind of helps out. If they all come up short like they're about to, he can just pick them off from car, fall back, help out towards long if required. And this is a great way to try and shut down these takes. Unfortunately, for Fnatic, Golden's going to go down straight away despite this short take coming in. So notice a lot of pressure comes out here towards JW. So Fnatic starts moving, or Flusher starts moving, sorry. And Golden gets picked out towards long. And this puts Flusher in a very, very difficult position. He gets flashed off as he's trying to rotate back out here. Gets the kill but he's too slow to escape. So great adaption from Fnatic. They just lose all the gunfights. Golden losing that 1v1 at long was a huge deal in this round. If he hangs on to long, uh, Flusher can just commit over here towards short, help out JW, and this is potentially a very different story. So great adaption by Fnatic. They just lose the gunfights. And you can see after that point, G2 just got on a bit of a tear. They lose the final round of the first half with some sloppy play, not checking some corners they probably should have. But besides that, they're pretty good. They've just won six CT rounds in a row, won the pistol quite convincingly. You can see they're not really losing any players, at least three players surviving in every single round. So Fnatic decided to use one of their timeouts, their very first one, and Fnatic timeouts are very famous. If you remember back when they used to play with Pronax, they're still the same core three players. They could be down a huge amount of rounds. They call this timeout and bang, they win the next 10 rounds in a row. Not really the case in this one, just wanted to mention it. But they're going to do for a very simple play, again, not reinventing the wheel. Something we've maybe seen NIP use most famously. I seem to remember Freiburg using this play to get himself into CT. And you're going to see it yourself in a second. So JW is going to get himself in position to smoke off Xbox. Again, nothing too fancy or cheeky about that. Xbox, very standard short control. Flash coming over. And they've basically got short. Again, we haven't seen uh, any great adaptations to hold off short very effectively. So Fnatic not really able to hold it too effectively in the first half either. So, short's just being given up by G2. They seem to realize this in their CT side. And Golden's going to get into position to allow Crims to drop into CT spawn and really pincer anyone playing that rotator position 
around here that we saw before. So that smoke's going to land here, just smoke off that. And you can see as this flash comes over, it's going to be perfectly for Crims to jump in. So if we pause it right now, we're right in the middle of Crims, that's always nice. Kenny's going to be smoked off, or not smoked off, flash, sorry. And Crims is able to jump into CT, you can see, even though he misses the jump, Kenny's still blind. He's able to actually get in here until Mixwell hits an absolutely insane shot from outside the B boxes. However, JW has other things to say. He's going to swing out here, and you can see the idea behind this strat. There wasn't anyone in CT to pincer onto and to really apply pressure to, but you can see the idea behind it. It's definitely, again, one we've seen before, Freiburg using it and stuff. And the round's still going to work out for them. They're going to push out here in towards middle. Flusher coming out of tunnel. So a great, very fast, explosive B split after taking short control. And again, this is very standard. Take short control, do some kind of B split is a very good way just to force players over towards A to respect you. And yeah, we've seen it before. Not reinventing the wheel. Watch old demos of Dust 2. You'll see the exact same thing. However, Fnatic forget the bomb. Great shot there. Lecro trades Mixwell, or Kenny S, sorry, I wish I could read, and it's into a 1v1. This is going to be a very, very weird round after this. The main thing to take away from it is that execute. I like that uh, a potential win or the potential execute from Fnatic. And Lecro is just going to win this 1v1. Notice he knows the player was over towards B, so the most likely spot for him to rotate is short or through the CT area. So he does check towards long, but again, he's looking for the information so he can control this. He doesn't want body sneaking up in for any direction, spots out the player, and just wins the fight. But ultimately, I like that drop into CT. Definitely something you can use a very simple flash and a smoke off short as we saw Golden do and can potentially catch off those rotators very easily. And you notice after that pistol win, things start to look up for Fnatic. They win a couple of rounds, see so planting the bomb, forcing G2 to save. But then Flusher, this guy just has huge testes. I mean, there's no other way to explain this. Look at this man, he's like... Straight down middle, Mixwell... He's completely caught off guard. Doesn't matter he's holding the ankle. He's so surprised that Flush is here in a matter of seconds. You can see the rotation this causes. Body's stuck in here towards CT, and Flush is just going to keep going. Running out middle does eventually get taken out, I believe, by NBK. But look at the spacing he's created right now. Map control completely given up by G2. No one's over it here long. Apex has dropped into CT spawn. Kenny's only just getting onto the A site. And G2 are in a really awkward situation where they have control of nothing. Even NBK has been forced over here towards the door area. And even though Fnatic don't look like they've achieved a lot, this round ends up being quite effective for them. Just this pressure towards middle. See, Lecro's able to come up here. Body thinks, I really need to get out here and help towards B. Because the play right now from Fnatic, as you can see, is just split onto this guy onto the B site. Golden runs out, all three of them. There's not much NBK can do. Lecro holds down this flank. And Kenny, as we've seen a lot for Dust2, is... He has no option but to save. So many bomb plants coming in, actually, in this one. Bomb plant, bomb plant. Great map. I'm looking forward to all these after plant positionings. A lot of saving, though. That can be a little bit boring from a spectator's point of view. But besides that, I actually really like this game. Very entertaining game on Dust2, Fnatic, and G2. But it has some great ideas. You can see they're a little bit rusty. You've got a few things they got to iron out, especially Fnatic on their CT side. Look a little bit lost at times. Honestly, though, I did enjoy the game and liked what both teams bought into it overall. And hopefully you enjoyed this short breakdown, or a little summary of this game, some of the strategies involved, how they played the map in general. And of course, if you do like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button if you haven't already. And I'll catch you all in a later one.